G'day guys, Ben here from Solar and Sat, and this week in the workshop we've had this Willow RV, absolutely awesome van, and this particular customer has ticked pretty much every box I could put on his quote as an optional extra, and then he's also drew some extra boxes and ticked those ones as well. Let's give you a run through from top to bottom, but it's definitely one of the coolest vans we've done in quite a while. Where do we start? Um, I might start with a bit of a list of the stuff that went into it because as I said, he ticked every box, added some extra ones and ticked those ones too. So he's gone for two 24 volt, 300 amp hour Sherby lithium batteries. So that's equivalent to 12 volt, 1200 amp hour of storage. He's married that up with a 24, 5000 Victron MultiPlus inverter charger. He's got a Victron Lynx distributor in here for fusing as well as a MIDI fuse distribution unit because of all the gear we've got. He's gone for the Victron Smart Shunt battery monitor to run the Servo GX with the Touch 70 display six Shervy 200 watt solar panels, four Shervy 130 watt solar panels, three Victron MPPT solar controllers, 100-50, 100-20, and 7515, two Orion DC to DC chargers, obviously 12 to 24, to charge his 24 volt lithium battery bank off his 12 volt alternator, and then another Victron DC to DC uh, Orion converter to go back from 24 volts down to 12 volt to run the few loads that can't actually run on 24 volts. So that will include lighting that has to run on 12 volt. Um, if the fridge had to, the TV 12 volt only loads will basically run on that guy. Then we pulled out his projector battery management system, obviously to make way for the Victron setup. We needed to because of space, but also just in terms of perfectionism, it lets us take out all of the, the separate components that aren't running through the Victron setup and run it all off that, which does increase reliability, of course, because you're not relying on the Victron system to do its job, as well as the, the projector system to do its job. As long as the Victron system's operating, it'll run the power through the converter and you've got power. Then we've gone for four water tank sensors that all run through that as well. We've got, as part of the BMS delete, we've had to fit two relays, one for the pump, one for all the loads. And because of that, we fitted two six-way positive uh, fuse blocks with negative bus bars as well. Then we've ran a 35 millimeter squared cable run on his vehicle to supply power to these two DC DC chargers. We fitted a Starlink conversion, and that's so obviously you can have internet wherever he wants. Five USB-C plus a power delivery 4.0 points, so that lets him charge up laptops, phones, drones, virtually anything he wants that runs on a USB-C. And then the USB-A's we put in are all 18 watt as well. So he's got the, the best of the best in way of USB plugs all around the van, including some for obviously the, the bunk beds at the rear. He's opted for two 220 watt portable solar panels. So that with his 1,720 watts of solar on the roof, he then got an additional 440 watts of portable. So over two kilowatts of solar on this particular job. Uh, complete electrical schematic, and then custom Chevy switching and custom Chevy plating, laser cut vents, and I believe that's everything he's opted for. So. Let's start up top with the solar fusing breakers, obviously the new standards, a lot of people have been asking us questions about those, and work our way all the way down to the big battery bank where it's got its own enclosure, venting to the outside, spill tray, all that sort of gear as well. So we'll start in the cupboards and go from there. So here's our custom plate that we've made up. So what we've done is we've made a full plate here to hide any of the existing screw holes, help us remove some of the projector gear that was in here, move some switches around. Obviously there was a whole bunch of stuff in this cupboard from factory. So by laser cutting and printing this plate, it let us hide all that gear as well as perfectly square up our own switching and obviously the Touch 70 display there. So from the top, Touch 70, same as you always see us do on these high-end jobs. We've got a 24 volt battery system this time, 90% charge. Obviously we're in the shed at the moment, so we're not seeing that big solar array going to work. We've got our whole water tank array here, so we can see what the fresh water tanks are up to, what the grey water tank's up to. The typical display screen you normally see here where we turn on AC loads and whatnot. Obviously the customer can adjust their AC current limit as well as a few other things, but um, that's basically the, the Touch 70 in a nutshell. We've got all our switching down here. Now we've got the system switch, the load switch, the pump switch, Starlink, and then the factory speaker switches that we've put onto our own switching setup as well, just to keep it all looking exactly the same. The system switch is obviously responsible for every single load in the caravan, whereas the load switch is what we call the non-critical loads, um, similar to what they do in boats, basically. You've got a circuit that has to stay on all the time, that's why it's a different color, and then our load switch turns off everything non-essential, we'll call it. It's not quite as extreme in a boat, but in this particular job, critical loads include things like power needed for brakes, the fridge, you obviously don't want to accidentally be turning that guy off when you turn your loads off, whereas loads includes things like the pump, the lights, non-essential stuff, fans, USBs, etc. So I always hit that loads button, lights go out, loads button, everything powers straight back on again. There's no delay, it's not a digital switch. This fella here activates a relay, which activates the whole fuse block. 
We've got our pump switch. I don't think I need to turn that on to show you what that does. And then we've got our 12 volt Starlink power here. Now the Starlink kits can use anywhere from five to six amps an hour. From our experience, that's a 12 volt when you're running it. So being able to turn it on and off at the press of a button and being able to run it separate to the big 5kVA inverter was fairly important in this job. So he can turn his Starlink on and off from there. That'll obviously power that up. We've got our AC in and out over here. So we've got 16 amp in, 32 amps total out. So one for his aircon, one for everything else. And that just helps him fully utilize his 5kVA inverter. And then we've got the standard switches in here for the various hot water setups. And of course his, um, his radio, he can turn on his indoor and outdoor speakers by those switches there. So that's the control area. Off to the left of all this, now I did promise to touch on the solar fusing and isolation side of things a little bit on this job. Now something you do have to bear in mind though is because it's a 24 volt caravan it does get done slightly differently to your typical 12 volt setup. And another thing to note is of course every van is different these days, there isn't really a catch all solution to it uh, without going hugely overkill in terms of how you wire and fuse it. On this particular job though we've done a, a method that includes a 12 volt or 24 volt fuse block married up to a DC breaker which we're using for isolation purposes. Now we've got four 130 watt panels on the roof and then six 200 watt panels on the roof. So this is our 200 watt array over here. It's got six 200s on it. So it's actually a 1200 watt array on this one fuse block. This is our 130 watt panel fuse block. Now the wording of the standards are that every single parallel connection needs to be fused. Now because it's a 24 volt system, we've had to do series connections as well to enable charging of that higher voltage battery bank. So basically all 10 panels up there have been married up to a body. So we've got five separate strings wide and parallel. Our two 130 watt strings, so two 130s in series, two 130s in series, are paralleled right into here where they're fused. That then runs through one of these breakers which allows it to be isolated, thus ticking both boxes on the standards. Over here we've got our six 200 watt panels. Now we've got three pairs of two, so two in series, two in series, two in series. All three pairs are fused in there and then once again ran through an isolator as well. Now aside from just being a legal requirement, there are a few benefits to hooking it up this way. Now let's say the customer was cruising along and he had a fault on a panel. But honestly, with the quality of gear we use, I very much doubt that that'll be an issue. What would happen is instead of basically knocking out the whole array, it'll just blow the fuse on the relevant string that has the problem. So one of his 200 watt fails, it blows the fuse and the rest of the array functions as per, as per usual. Um, and then what it helps the customer do is when he sees which fuse is blown, he can then identify which set of panels has the problem. And especially when you have 10 panels on your roof, it can make it a lot easier to fault find. And of course, it gives you layers of protection when you're out and about. You don't want to be in the middle of nowhere and then caught with no solar array. It's actually one of the reasons, obviously, uh, it's a benefit having separate regulators, especially when you've got different angles employed. On this particular van, it's all flat, so we don't need to stress over that too much. We've got each of the regulators on a breaker there, one goes down to 100-50, one goes down to 100-20. Obviously the larger array going through the bigger regulator. That is the fusing in a nutshell. Got the Starlink set up in there as well. Basically the overhead cupboard area. Fair bit of work went into this area, but not nearly as much as what went in below. So let's have a look at that next. Okay, now this side is the comparatively simple side of the whole system, but we'll touch on it all anyways. So we've got the two dedicated fuse blocks here with two relays, the main mini fuse. The idea of this fella here is it replaced the projector BMS. So everything that was wired up to it is now wired up to this. We've got our beautiful new black ducting. Um, that's really polished off the job quite nicely. We've got the MultiPlus 24 volt 5kVA inverter charger. This guy here is what lets the customer run his aircon while also running his induction cooktop, while potentially also making a coffee at the same time. It's an awesome piece of kit and we've wired it up to let the customer fully take advantage of that. We've then got the 24 to 12 DC-DC converter, and that's of course going to be responsible for running all the 12 volt loads around the place, as well as the 12 volt cooling fans where we've laser cut the vents for, as you can see. We've installed the USB-C point here for the customer, as well as one on the other side and a few other points around the, uh, around the caravan. But basically that's, that's the distribution side of it. Let's head over to the system side and show you what we've done. This is the busy side, that's for sure. So we've got all the chargers here, um, bar the inverter charger, of course. So we've got a 50 amp MPPT solar controller, a 20 amp unit, got a 15 amp tucked down there as well, two 15 amp DC-DCs in parallel. But uh, let's start from the left, work our way along, and we'll touch on the batteries afterwards. So the 50 amp solar controller, typically capable of 700 watts of solar input when used in a 12 volt system. Being that this is a 24 volt system, it allows us to run up to 1400 watts through this guy. We're utilizing 1200 of that. Over to the 20 amp unit, typically capable of 290 watts of solar input. Obviously in a 24 volt system, being double that, we're actually running, or we can run 580 watts through it. Um, we're running four 130s in series parallel, so that gives us 520 watts total running through this guy. These two DC-DCs are wired on 35 millimeter squared to the alternator of the vehicle. I doubt the alternator is going to provide the full uh, 720 watts of throughput, 
but it will be able to provide somewhere between that 360 and 720. So the customer is getting effectively one and a half times as much as you would typically get in a standard single DC DC charger system. Got the Lynx distribution unit. Now this guy here is fed by twin 70 millimeter squared conductors. So that's two positives, two negatives, each of them fused at 250 amps. Obviously the fusing themselves, I think they're an MRBF fuse holder on each of them. So the idea there is it's got a very large interrupt rating to help handle this very, very large lithium battery bank. Then we've got a separate MIDI distribution fuse lock down there as well, because we were running out of real estate, as you can see. So we've tried to put all the big stuff on the Lynx distributor and any of the stuff that can get away with a little bit lighter duty fusing on the MIDI distribution unit down there. And of course that then throws it off to the 12 volt fusing we've got on the other side as well. We put our Serbo GX down here, our Tank 140 down here, utilized all four inputs on that Tank 140, utilized all three VE Direct uh, inputs on the Serbo GX, and then we've used a VE Direct U to USB adapter to hook up the extra gear we've got in here. Whole bunch of stuff inside. Um, I think we've got our portable solar controller down there as well. So obviously he has two 220 watt portable solar panels. To reiterate, he's got 1,720 watts of solar on his roof, running through these guys, and then an additional 440 watts of portable solar power as well. So over 2,000 watts of solar input. He's got up to a maximum of 720 watts of DC to DC input. And then if you cheat a little bit and use the inverter, it's 120 amps of charge at 24 volts. So that's 240 amps of charge at 12 volt, just off the inverter charger. Hence the reason we've gone such a behemoth uh, battery bank, which uh, on that note is a 24 volt, 600 amp power lithium battery bank. So that can accept the full charge input of every single one of these charges put together, and it can use that uh, MultiPlus to its full extent, including its ability to surge to twice its output. So it's a, it's a very well-matched system, obviously makes it very, very large, but it lets the customer run all of the 240 volt appliances they could possibly want. Cooling it is of course a challenge. We've actually got the Truma heater in here. We didn't fit that guy up, but it obviously needed to share space with us. So that was in here prior to our installation. So we've custom laser cut some cooling vents here, hooked them up onto fans as well that are constantly pushing cool air through this setup. We didn't have many options in terms of how we could lay it out and we had to partition off his outdoor cupboard. But um, basically the fact that we got it in here at all, I think is, is quite impressive. My hat's off to our installers and I think they've done a fantastic job. So we've built our batteries here in an enclosure that's vented out underneath the batteries to the outside. And then of course we've built around it and um, around the edging in a second, we'll be putting in all our seals, of course, to make sure it meets those new standards. But that's basically the whole system. I'm pretty sure I touched on everything I wanted to touch on. Um, I actually had to shoot the installers out of this van for just a moment to allow us to record this but we've been firing on all cylinders doing up to five of these lithium conversions a week. So we have been flat chat. So I really wanted to show this one off, but I'm gonna get out of here, let them finish their job. If there's anything you'd like to know, make sure you drop a comment down below and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.